So in Lost in Translation, there's a scene where Bill Murray is shooting an ad in Tokyo, and there's a translator uh, giving him directions, uh, which the film director is given. Um, he says something like this: "Soshte teburi ne oyna va, samtur whisky garimas, arimas ne, kanju komete, yukkuri to, kamera mitte, yasashku, soshte anato no furi tomodachi ni aeri ni, yotte kudasai, kazabranko no bogi ni aeri ni, kimi no shitemi ni kampai." And the translator translates this as he wants you to turn, look in camera. And the Bill Murray is like, is that all he said? Uh, this joke is done many times in film and television. These are a couple of films where uh, examples of these can be seen. Lost in Translation is where I took my example. Uh, the Great Dictator, The Three Stooges, and uh, two more are there. And a couple of uh, television shows as well. These feature this joke at least once in their episodes. So what we call this is a trope, uh, a common element in many creative works. Uh, they, they're found everywhere and this joke is repeated everywhere. This one, this one example was a trope and there will be other examples I will show you throughout this presentation. And the title of my presentation is Archetypal Literary Criticism in the Age of Television or an Elementary Treatise in Mechanics. Don't, don't get uh, bothered with the huge title, we'll get to that later on. But my overview, uh, first I'll talk about why tropes are uh, abundant, and I will convince you that they are in fact abundant, and later on I will touch upon uh, their usefulness, uh, and I will convince you that they are useful. So, back to the title. Uh, Archetypal literary criticism in the age of television, or an elementary treatise on mechanics. This is not very new. I'm just reusing ideas that uh, other uh, fiction writers used before. These are the titles of uh, many fictional works containing or in their titles. Frankenstein or the modern Prometheus. Moby Dick, this is in fact how you correctly spell Moby Dick, the hyphen is there. Uh, or the whale. Uh, and the last three are movies. When evening falls on Bucharest or metabolism. The second part of the title, an elementary treatise on mechanics, it's just uh, like, it, it doesn't have anything, any relation to my presentation whatsoever. Uh, and this is a non-indicative title. Uh, it doesn't indicate anything relevant to my presentation. And these are uh, also examples in film. Fargo, for instance, is not set in Fargo, North Dakota, it's set in Minnesota. Uh, the Pink Panther does not contain any Pink Panthers, and the Monty Python's Flying Circus is not about a flying circus. And uh, it's another thing, the elementary treatise on mechanics, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's just a world salad. I put in uh, words together and uh, it's just a title. And there are some examples of that as well. Godspeed You Black Emperor is a band, and 50. 65 Days of Static is also a band, and this is their song, the distant and mechanized glow of Eastern European dance parties. Um, tropes are everywhere. In fact, I've just used three of them in my title. Uh, but the reason why tropes are very common, they're found everywhere, is that they're part of the human uh, stories, uh, part of what we tell, uh, like, to convey truths, for instance, or discuss about the future, speculate. We use stories everywhere, and uh, every story is influenced by what came before it, and the first stories were myths. In fact, archetypal literary criticism is also called myth criticism. Let's talk about myths. Myths are very important because it gives us very uh, usable information about um, our lives. It reflects on our lives. Um, how to act properly in a given situation, the natural progression of our lives, the birth, uh, the initiation, uh, getting old and eventually dying, all are told in the stories of myths. Uh, Gillespie in 2000 uh, and time work um, sort of identified which kind of uh, archetypes exist in those myths. And these are archetypal locations, settings. Uh, he includes these, uh, for instance, paradise-like gardens as archetypal um, 
myth element. Archetype it means, um, it's a Greek word for original pattern. Uh, it means a common element, symbol, uh, or anything common in uh, myths. He continues with identifying archetypal characters. For instance, you have hero warriors, orphans, sorcerers, dark strangers, and many more. Hero warriors, uh, being the most common of them, are the central part of almost every story. And then we have the uh, archetypal character conflicts. Why are they uh, conflicting? We have, uh, for instance, uh, competing brothers, rebellious children, and uh, last but not least, we have uh, the archetypal story arcs. A stranger comes to town. Uh, opposites are attract. Rags to riches. Rags to riches is very common in, in stories. It's the central figure of many stories. Now, uh, every story almost can be built on those tropes and uh, you can identify many more and they are not new. They're timeless. They transcend life. They're not necessarily part of stories. They're part of our lives. And why why do this? Why uh, read about tropes? Why uh, do this sort of criticism? Well, it offers you a new way to analyze literature. It's so uh, like the conventional way of analyzing literature is by uh, analyzing the history or the biography of the writer. Uh, but this way you can actually do more than that. You can, uh, you can for instance, uh, take elements from myths. You can do the biographies of the gods and prehistory where all stories originate from. And analyzing literature gives you a way to analyze life as well. Uh, David and Goliath, uh, little guy fighting dragons. And uh, for instance, you might be an individual in the modern age fighting institutions by your own. You are powerless compared to them and this is your conflict. And this is the same story, just told in a different way, adapted into our modern lives. Uh, gives you insight into how you're living your life. Uh, and one more is collective unconsciousness. Uh, this, is, this is very important. Uh, everything we do is affected by our unconscious. Uh, our behavior is determined by this. And uh, I read this in Dobie's 2014 book, Theory into Practice. It's a very useful book if you're interested in literary criticism. Uh, she noted that Freud and his uh, previous uh, student, former student, uh, Carl Jung, they, are differing, uh, they have different opinions on how unconscious um, appears on uh, the society. Freud, Freud states that it's um, like for everyone. What built you, built you and no one else, while Carl Jung suggests that uh, we are different, uh, but we are sharing part of it. The human species are sharing part of it and it makes human beings a whole uh, living organism on its own. And this is how we interpret stories, how we uh, speak. Language works this way, stories work this way. Everything we've built in this modern civilization depends on this, he says. Uh, at this stage, I would like to eliminate two misconceptions uh, which were identified by Guerin uh, in 2010. Well, the first one is myths are not fictions or falsehoods. They are stories that we are taking elements from. Um, it shouldn't be like, oh, dragons don't exist in life, so this myth is not real. This is not the purpose of a myth. A myth exists because it is, and it's the basis of our stories. This is the human thinking. This is our unconscious building it. And secondly, myths are not only derived from classical Greek and Roman sources. Every culture has myths on their own. Uh, Asian cultures have different myths, while uh, the Roman cultures have different myths. But they're connected in a way that uh, the core idea, the underlying archetypes are similar. Uh, and lastly, I want to talk about TV Tropes, a wonderful website if you're interested in media. Uh, this is in a wiki format. You can uh, edit the pages on your own. You can browse it for free. Uh, if you visit the page of, for instance, The Wire, one of my favorite TV shows, the tropes will be listed in this format. And uh, the examples of each one is listed like this. And uh, for instance, alliterative name. Uh, it's, it's when the name and the surname begins with the same letter. Bodhi Brodus, for instance. 
Uh, and if you are not sure how the trope is defined, you can click on the blue link and you will be presented by a page that looks like this. It's listing every, not every, but most common examples of alliterative names in other types of fiction. Donnie Darko, King Kong, these are from uh, film, but you can look at them from literature and many other places. Uh, to conclude, archetypal literary criticism offers us a new way to look at uh, art uh, in general in our life because it's offering us a new perspective to look at things, uh, not by any uh, other uh, external source, but by the underlying themes, underlying archetypes of the work. Uh, and all of this is timeless. It transcends life, time, everything. This is what builds human beings, and this is our thing to say. And I urge you to visit TV Tropes and put in your favorite TV show and read about it. It will be uh, a very fun experience. Uh, these are my references list for those who are interested. And uh, I thank you for listening. Uh, now, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Yes, please. Thank you for this informative presentation. One question that I'd like to ask is, does every movie or every literary work have some kind of trope uh, engraved in it? I mean, are there some odd examples of works that do not cover any of the tropes, and what if there is? That's a very cool question. Uh, and I, I, I'm just going to say that every work has tropes. Um, there are a couple of reasons. The first one is that you can't really avoid a trope. For instance, uh, if there's a trope, it's very common, uh, you can subvert it, uh, put it in a new way, or uh, deconstruct it. You can uh, eliminate the common, uh, common parts of it found in other works and present it in a new way that is unique to that. And if you try to become tropeless, like if you don't, don't try to employ anything, well, it's kind of impossible because, because everything has been done. Uh, you could, for instance, make a movie with no dialogue at all except in one place. Has been done. You can make a movie with only one character in one setting. Has been done. Uh, and theoretically, let's assume that there is a work that was unique to itself. Um, it didn't employ any kind of trope uh, whatsoever. Uh, what would that be? It's not human. It's not... Uh, product of human beings, because uh, this is what we think, what we build upon. Uh, the basis of our uh, thinking comes from the unconscious, and we are bound to create stories that fit to that uh, interface. Thank you. I thank you.